Hi there, my name is Scott McDonald, and today I'm going to teach you how to do a full twisting cradle on tramp wall. There are a few prerequisites you should be comfortable with before you start trying these. First, you should have a solid cradle pullover to the face of the wall. You should be so comfortable doing pullover to the face of the wall that it happens almost automatically because in the full cradle, this transition tends to happen much more abruptly than in a regular cradle. If you need help with any of that, I have tutorials for both cradle and pullover on my channel. You should also be able to do a well-controlled full cradle on trampoline, setting and spotting the bed down your body throughout the entire trick. If you feel iffy or rushed on these, take time to get them solid and controlled before you start trying them on the wall. When trying the prerequisites, drills, or the trick itself, make things as safe as possible by having a friend throw a mat for you for as long as it takes to get comfortable. For the sake of having a reliable grip on the wall, I recommend wearing wrestling shoes and avoiding socks. I also suggest wearing a shirt that covers your shoulders and possibly a back warmer as your back skin can get a little bit abraded while learning these. Let's get familiar with how full cradles work before you start trying them. A full cradle on trampoline is a half flip with one and a half twists. In the tramp wall version, you have the same total amount of flip and twist, but the first quarter flip is just getting you from your back to the wall, so you really only get a quarter flip in which to fit the one and a half twists. Just like a regular cradle on wall, if you twist left, it's easiest to enter this from a run with your right foot on top and vice versa. This will make it easier to smoothly turn your hips and shoulders into the twist without feeling like you're getting tangled up on your own legs. It's not strictly necessary. You can also enter the trick from a cross stance like this, but it tends to look and feel a little more awkward. Start by running the wall about chest height, and then when you're ready to do the trick, place your feet a little bit lower, just like you would for a regular cradle or a swan dive. Get your shoulders higher than your hips, Push upward and slightly outward with your feet, and drive your heels beneath and slightly behind you with less speed or power than you would use for a regular wall cradle. Because this is technically a bigger trick, it might seem counterintuitive to push off with less power, but because you have to fit more twist into the same amount of flip, you need to try to actively flip slower than usual. Aim to land in the box, safely away from the springs on either side of the trampoline. I typically keep my arms at or below shoulder level throughout the entire trick, but that depends on which twist technique I'm using. There's no right or wrong, so you can either bring your arms in like a gymnast, keep them by your sides like a trampolinist, have one arm overhead like a diver, or just put both overhead. It's awkward, but it works. As you can see, the arms aren't what make the twist happen. It's all about staying tight in your core and bringing your shoulder and hip in the same direction at the same time. You should also make sure your legs are staying together and straight in the air, because this will make your twist much more efficient. As for visual reference points, as I kick off my back, I look at the wall where I'm going to place my feet, and then once my feet have made contact and pushed off, I immediately shift my gaze to look down my body at the trampoline. I keep watching the bed through the entire trick, and then as soon as I land on my back, I immediately enter a pullover, usually do a half twist on the wall, and resume running. At first, you'll probably be very focused on the trick and the twist, but try to consciously bend your knees when you land on your back so that your pullover will be much smoother and easier to initiate. In my tramp wall cradle tutorial, there's a drill where you run the wall and then do a quarter twist to return to your feet, just like this. For the full cradle, we're going to revisit this drill, but incrementally add twist until you can do either a full twist to land facing back to the wall, or even better, a full and a quarter to land facing sideways. This will teach you how to push off properly and get the right ratio of twist to flip. As you do this drill, consciously focus on all the different aspects of the full cradle. Make sure you're staying tight, pushing off the wall properly instead of just kicking it, spotting the trampoline down your body, and wrapping your arms and legs together to try and twist as efficiently as possible. I know there's not a lot of drills here, but this is really as far as you can go without committing to just missing your feet and trying the full cradle. At this point, it's entirely a mind game, so have a friend throw a mat for you and drill it until you feel like you can commit to doing it to the trampoline itself. Once you can do that, congratulations, you have a shiny new full cradle. Let's take a look at some of the most common mistakes people make while learning full cradle and how to fix them or just avoid them outright. First off, if you don't spot the trampoline down your body, it's very easy to get lost in this trick. 
Spotting the bed the entire time gives you as much visual feedback and safety as possible, which is especially helpful in an enclosed setup like this where all the walls are the same color. If you flip too much, you could potentially land on your neck, although it is pretty unlikely with this trick. And if you flip too little, then you'll land feet first and then slam your head into the trampoline. If either of these happen to you, I recommend revisiting the mat and also making sure that you're driving your heels beneath yourself like a regular cradle and not around yourself because you're thinking about the twist. At first, you might be tempted to try full cradles very low because going high is intimidating, but this will make you rush your takeoff and it'll be very difficult to keep track of what you're doing in the air. Also make sure you're not trying this trick on blocks because they tend to shift when you push into them. Try to take off with a comfortably wide stance and make sure you're not aggressively kicking or punching off the wall. At first, you'll probably rush the takeoff, but try to take your time and feel yourself push upward before you start cranking the twist. If you push too aggressively outward, you might land with your tailbone on the springs at the far side, and if you push too far upward, you can land with your head in the springs at the base of the wall, which is quite a lot sketchier. Your body should feel like it's at roughly a 45 degree angle to the wall when you push off. If you feel like you're too close, try to physically push yourself away from the wall, flat spin as much as possible to land with your torso on the bed, and generally just try to protect your head and avoid the frame. As far as twisting issues go, make sure you're flexing your abs and your butt, keeping your legs straight and together, bringing your arms in tight, and not segmenting the twist. It should feel like one fluid motion from start to finish. If you rush the takeoff and try and twist immediately, there's a very good chance you'll do a quarter flat spin and wind up parallel to the wall rather than perpendicular to it. This especially tends to happen if you pivot on your feet on the face of the wall or drop your shoulder towards the opposite hip. This isn't necessarily a bad thing. With time, you can deliberately flat spin like this so you land like a side drop rather than a pullover setup, but you don't want it to be your default. So make sure that you're driving your legs beneath yourself and setting before you wrap the twist. Now that you understand full cradles, here are a few ways you can keep progressing. Anywhere that you would normally use a cradle in a combo, you can sub in a full cradle. You can try using them as a transfer from wall to wall if you have an enclosed setup like this one. You can add a twist and do a 900 twisting cradle. And perhaps most importantly, you can start learning a full twisting swan dive. Full cradle and full swan dive feel extremely similar, so having this trick will make learning that one much easier. I'll be making a tutorial for full swan dives and a whole bunch of other tricks very soon, so if you want to keep up to date with new videos, please hit subscribe. In any case, I hope this gave you everything you need to learn full cradles, but if there's anything you're unclear about, please let me know in the comments below. As always, please like, share, and subscribe. If you're interested in coaching in person or online, I'm always available. Feel free to check out my Instagram at Scott A. McDonald. And until next time, happy training and good luck with your full cradles. Bye.